Hello and welcome back to AP Computer Science Principles. Today we are going to do some example problems converting between our familiar base 10 system and hexadecimal. If you're not sure what I mean by hexadecimal, please go ahead and click the link up there to go to my video where I explain it. So as you can see, we have two numbers that are in hex, we've got two numbers that are in base 10, and we want to find the correct translation for each. Let's go ahead and start with B7. This space that the B is on is worth 16, so whatever that number B is, and yes, in this case it is a number, we're going to multiply it by 16. Now, let's go ahead and recall that once you hit 9, the value of 10 is represented by an A, a B represents 11, so there are 11 16s and seven ones. There are also zero 256s if we care, which we don't, but it's true anyway. 11 16s and seven ones. I happen to know that 11 times 16 is 176, but I do encourage the use of calculators if you don't like doing that kind of mental math. Plus seven is 183. So B7 is 183 when written in base 10. Our second problem is to take the number 75 in base 10 and convert it over to hex. Now, I think we can all agree that 75 is smaller than 256, so we're not going to pay any attention to that place value. The second question is, how many times does 16 go into 75? That'll be the number up here, is how many 16s are in that 75? The most straightforward method I know is to take that 75 and divide it by 16, which, if you've got a calculator, and I do, gives you about 4.6875. We're not really interested in the 0.6875 part. We now know that the number for the 16s space is 4. There are 4 16s in 75 plus a little bit extra. Now that we've got the 16s place dealt with, we need to figure out how many 1s are left over. Now, there are a couple of ways to do that. I'll show you two. One way is to use this decimal right here, the part that I told you to ignore earlier. You can take that 0.6875 and multiply it times our scale factor, 16. What is 0 0.6875 times 16? 6,875 times 16 is 110,000. That's not what I was asking for, but it does look like it is 11. Now, there can be an instant temptation to put the number 11 inside this space, but remember, you can only have one symbol per space. That's why we have A be worth 10 and B be worth 11. The other way you could find that 11 is by taking 75 and subtracting the four 16s. So mathematically, you take 16 times 4, and then you take that away from 75. That should also give you 11. Go ahead and check my work. Onward to the third problem, and once again, it's very important that you remember that this one zero represents two separate places. So we are trying to decode the number 10F and put it into base 10. Well, we have one in the 256th place, and we have zero in the 16th place. In fact, we probably don't even need to write this at all because it doesn't really change anything. And we have an F in the ones place, and F stands for 15. So now that we know that we have one 256 and 15 ones, all we have to do is add them together, 256, and 15, 6 and 5 is 11, 5 and 10 and 10 is 70, and 2 is just 2. So we get 271 for our final answer. Our final task is to take the number 300 and translate it into hexadecimal. Now, I think we can agree 
that the number one goes in the 256 spot. 256 is less than 300, but when you double it, it's something like 500 something. So only one 256 is going to fit. So instead of doing any weird division, we're just gonna subtract the 256 to figure out how much we've got left over. I'll even do the subtraction using the old school quote unquote borrowing method just to appease any of the common core haters out there. Now we've got 10 minus six is four. We've got 90 minus 50, which is 40. And we've got 200 minus 200, which is zero. We have 44 left over. Now, just like we did a couple of problems ago, we need to figure out how many 16s and how many ones make up that 44. And just like then, we're gonna go ahead and do it via division. My calculator tells me that 44 divided by 16 is 2.75. So I will put a two in the 16 spot and then I will take the 0.75 that's left over, multiply it by 16 to get 12. In hexadecimal, 12 is C. So the correct representation of 300 in hexadecimal is 1, 2, C. As you can see, the math isn't particularly complicated, although it is a bit tedious. The good news is the only place you're really ever gonna have to do these calculations is on the AP exam. The bad news is that it almost certainly will be on the AP exam. When you're doing this kind of conversion, make sure to double check your work. Multiple times when I was filming this very video, I found that I made a mistake during the process that led to a wrong answer, and the only reason I caught that before I published is because I always double check my work, especially when it's something that goes up on YouTube. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.